Hello YouTube, Brown Owls Tech Tips here, and I've got some interesting information for you. When it comes to virtualization in a Windows machine, a lot of you tend to turn to VirtualBox or VMware Fusion, VMware Workstation, and or um, VMware Viewer for virtual machines. Um, you can use Oracle VirtualBox and VMware Viewer in Windows 10. But here's something a lot of people really don't know about the current versions of Windows 10 today. How about if you just used Hyper-V? That's right. It's included in Windows 10 now. It's not just for the server distros or server versions of Windows. It is now part of the actual Windows 10 operating system. So... The interesting thing in that aspect is, yes, if you have virtualization technology, which almost all systems today do, you already have a full virtual platform without having to install any third-party software. One of the things a lot of people don't realize, too, is in this last recent major update, you also have Ubuntu now natively installed in Linux and Windows, so you now have Linux built into Windows, in which you can actually use to execute Linux binaries don't believe me research that shit you might be surprised so now for any of you that are security conscious yes you are now susceptible to both linux attacks and windows attacks in one freaking os gotta love that shit anyhow with windows 10 if you right click on the start button go to programs and features this will tell you real fast whether it's installed or not so come down here to turn Windows features on or off and click that. It's going to bring up a list of all the current features. And you'll see right there, Hyper-V. And it's already selected on mine. It's already installed. And I also have a shortcut down here. If it's not installed on yours, all you have to do is check mark that sucker, click OK, and guess what? Shut out. You have Hyper-V installed and it runs natively in Windows 10. You see the .NET Framework stuff. Of course, you have IE11. Oh, sorry. You have a RIP listener for routers. Telnet client. Trivial FTP client. Yeah, right. Don't use that at all by any stretch of the imagination for any freaking reason. That is the most unsecure crap both Telnet and TFTP? Yeah. That is like opening up a door and saying, Welcome, friend. Welcome, attacker. Please don't steal anything from me. But you can come in anytime you want. Are you really going to do that? Would you do that with your house? Would you do that with your kids in the house? No. Why would you do it with your computer? But anyhow, once you select the Hyper-V, click OK and everything, and it installs, then you can just go on from there, close all this out, if you don't know exactly where it's at, you can click down here and start or click on your search and then just type in Hyper and bam, there's your Hyper-V manager. If you do like I did, you put an icon down here because I tend to use Hyper-V a lot. You'll notice there's none on here on this right now. That's fine. So now we're going to right click on the system. Go to New virtual machine and then we're going to configure said virtual machine so to set up the new virtual machine all you got to do is put in the name which I'm actually going to prep this one for my next video which is going to be for cubes OS so we're going to call this cubes 64 bit we're going to leave it to store the virtual machine in the default location. Click Next. Now you can specify which generation. Is it going to be a Gen 1 or Gen 2? Yes, this does make a difference. Gen 1, this virtual machine generation supports 32-bit and 64-bit guest host operating systems and provides virtual hardware which has been available in all previous versions of Hyper-V. Or you can do Gen 2. This virtual machine generate generation provides support for newer virtual features it has uefi based firmware and requires support of 64-bit guest operating systems 
so if you want overall compatibility generation one if you have something like uh, windows 8 uh, newer versions of windows 7 windows 10 newer distros of linux that have uefi support you can go with generation 2. this one i'm going to make a gen 2. let's click next assign memory that's four gig right there four zero nine six to figure up your memory amount say like you want to do two gig we'll multiply two by one zero two four you'll get two zero four eight and that's two gig of ram and megabytes this one's four zero nine six so if you multiply one thousand twenty four by four you'll get forty ninety six that's four gig in megabytes I don't want to use dynamic memory so I'm going to deselect that I want the memory to be hard allocated and not be able to shift and use it as it needs it I'm going to click next now configure networking each virtual machine includes a network adapter you can configure the network adapter for use in the virtual switch or it can be disconnected I don't have a secondary uh, card in here so it's not going to have the virtual switch which is fine and we're going to create the hard drive it really doesn't need to be that big we're only going to go 25 gigabytes you know what We're going to go ahead and create a virtual switch. Select the actual virtual. Alright, the virtual switch is being built so I can actually give the virtual machines network connectivity. I have a gigabit ethernet so I'm really not worried about it. They can honestly share the connection and it's not going to hurt a thing. Most of the time I'm going to end up shutting down most of the uh, connections and stuff anyway. So now that it actually has a switch, we can go ahead and go previous, next, or let's just cancel. start the process of creating a new virtual machine again new virtual machine next cubes 64 bit and yes you will have to create that uh, virtual switch in order to supply external connectivity six do not use dynamic memory allocation networking now we have the hyper-v switch virtual network hard drive or virtual hard drive 25 gig installation options we're going to select the cubes installer disk
and there's the summary so we're going to click finish now it's going to create the virtual machine and you have now created a virtual machine and you have also created a actual network virtual switch that it uses so that way you uh, have connectivity to your virtual machines through Hyper-V so now that we're going to go to this we're going to right click on the cube 64 click settings and now we're going to go fine tune some of the other hardware so as you can see right here you have the firmware it's going to boot from the DVD drive you have security which you can incur, uh, enable a secure boot you have the trusted platform a trusted platform module TPM is a special purpose microprocessor that provides cryptographic services to the computer platform uh, a lot of the HP business laptops have TPM built into them most business laptops have TPM of some sort and you can actually encrypt your drive and other things so that way your information is encrypted and very hard to very very hard to just get a hold of for an attacker I'm not saying that they can't do it it just makes it that much more difficult so here's your hard drive controller there's the hard drive you can actually add more drives if you want or just leave it like it is there's the network adapter the main thing that we're going to change is this processor you see how it says virtual processor we're going to use two click apply okay you've went in and modified the settings and that's pretty much how you use Hyper-V. It's pretty simple. It's a lot like uh, a lot like Oracle VirtualBox and VMware's uh, vir vir VMware Workstation. Uh, all the virtualization environments tend to mimic each other fairly well, and they make it as easy as possible to use. This information is out there for absolutely everybody. And as always, watch, like, and share. Have yourselves a great day.